Hi, everyone. My name's Clay. Uh, thank you for joining for the first interview of this Job Canary series. So my name's Clay. Like I mentioned, I'm an IO psychologist. And if you don't know what that is, we study human behavior at work. So Taylor, Taylor the esthetician, is uh, an esthetician, and she has graciously agreed to be interviewed and talk about her career. So uh, thanks for joining, Taylor. Thanks for having me, Clay. <laughs> and uh, I guess to start, Taylor, why don't you give us just a brief history of your career journey so you can tell us about your previous jobs, your education at a high level. Yeah, so um, I definitely did not become an esthetician fresh out of high school. Um, whenever I graduated, I got into the real estate kind of industry. Um, so I did that for about six years, and it was good experience for what I do now. Um, I feel like I always had a passion for the beauty industry that I never truly pursued. In um, 2019, I had decided to make the transition, and I went to the Aveda Institute. I had a great time there. It was very strenuous, but really good experience for the real workplace um, coming out of there. So I do aesthetics full-time now. Um, I still work part-time at a massage in me um, just to kind of fill my books, do some of the more advanced skincare treatments. And then I also just decided to go solo. Um, so I work from home as well and take my clients there. Um, but yeah, I've been doing uh, my work as an esthetician for a little less than two years now. That's awesome. So uh, how was that transition for you, at least initially, between being a real estate agent and being an esthetician? Um, well, it's a very different kind of job, for sure. Um, I feel like it's definitely much more focused on the service versus the sales, even though sales are a big part of how I make my money and um, not necessarily just like retailing the product to make money, but I feel like that's the best thing to do for people's skin is to sell them their home care. Um, but it was definitely not as hard as I thought it would be. I was still able to kind of take my real estate clients and not really accept any new ones from the current ones that I already had. So it wasn't too, too hard to transition, but good experience overall in the real estate real estate, but um, aesthetics is definitely much more enjoyable for me. It's a lot easier to make people ha happy, it's a lot easier to sell them some skincare versus a house. Right. It's a lot smaller of a commitment, I guess, than uh, plunking down a couple <laughs> hundred thousand for a house. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to read off some tasks to you that are associated with an esthetician and uh, feel free to interject if you have any comments about them. Uh, this is sort of just free form. There's no structure to this. I'm just going to go through some things. So first item is sterilizing equipment and cleaning work areas. Yeah, that is such a big part of what I do. Um, even pre-pandemic, that is really the main thing that they teach you in school is how to be sanitary. Because um, I feel like skincare is very trendy on social media. I feel like everywhere I go on YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, everyone's always talking about skin and trying to talk about what works for them. But uh, they don't really put a lot of focus on the sanitation behind everything. Not even just sterile sterilizing our pools, even just as simple as washing their hands before washing their face. Um, it's things that uh, the professionals think about constantly where we have to kind of educate you guys on stuff like that. Yeah, and I'm sure that uh, sanitation has taken a whole new level of importance since the beginning of the pandemic. I'm sure your clients really want to make sure that everything is clean and sterilized before you perform a service on them. Right. And and it's very easy to cut corners in this industry. It's very easy to reuse your sheets or not let your brush just soak in a disinfectant for at least 10 minutes. And I feel like, um, you know, it's really important to not cut those corners and give everyone the type of service that you would want for yourself, too. 
Oh, awesome. Well, thank you for that. So the next item is examining client skin using magnifying lamps when necessary to evaluate skin condition and appearance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the consultation is probably one of the most important parts of the service. We want to make sure that we're identifying their skin's needs, um, even if they don't know what their skin's needs are. Um, so it's very important important to look at everything up close before putting anything on their face for sure. Okay um, and let's see so cleansing skin so can you talk a little bit about maybe different types of products that you might use on someone's skin so a cleanser versus an exfoliant versus something else? Yeah absolutely um, so cleansing is the first step of the the process. It's just washing the dirt and oil and any kind of leftover makeup off your face versus your exfoliants. Um, those are products that typically have, have little kinds of grains in them. You see their scrubs on the shelves in the drugstore and in Sephora all the time now um, to where that's not necessarily something you want to do daily like washing your face because it can be a little too rough for your skin. Um, same thing with your or masks or if you choose even like to get a facial you know you shouldn't do a full treatment like that every single day because that would be too aggressive for your skin but it is recommended to come in once a month um, but I work with a variety of products it's definitely not just cleansers and moisturizers I feel like we have different types of exfoliants where we have manual ones versus ones that do the job chemically um, there's so many different kinds of masks on the market and um, it's really important to have have a, um, of products to offer. Like I feel like if one of your clients have, have an allergy of some sort to something that you're using in a particular line, it's important to know how to work, work with other lines and be able to cater to every skin's need. Yeah, and um, I guess, can you speak a little bit to how, you know, maybe in school or just in your own learning, how you may have, um, gained ingredient knowledge so maybe understanding like really what's inside of the products and why it's important to understand that so that you don't inadvertently give somebody something that might not be good for their skin yeah um so whenever i was in school i remember particularly there was a whole entire day where we went through every beta product in the skincare line and looked at the ingredients and had to highlight three ingredients and what they would do. Um, so I started doing that on my own outside of work, um, or excuse me, outside of school, because I didn't want to just offer botanical treatments. I wanted to still have the active chemicals in there as well. So I spent a lot of time doing a continuing education and mostly just on my own time. I never paid for any kind of professional classes um, that were in person, but I would watch a ton of webinars and really look up um, on different kind of skincare dictionary apps, if you will, like what different ingredients mean and what kind of skin types are they beneficial to. Because um, I feel like if you're able to read the label, you're able to tell what's in it. Because um, it's definitely not about how pretty the package looks. It's the first five ingredients that are listed are gonna have the highest concentration and those are the most important ones. So if the first ingredient is some type of alcohol, that's probably not gonna be very good good for someone with sensitive skin or dry skin or really any skin at all because we shouldn't be putting alcohol on our skin again. <laughs> yeah that's great um i mean i think it's uh i think you know just from a client perspective i i think that it says a lot about someone the more they know about the products and i i find that um i find that really important and i'm glad you definitely seem to be aware of of those ingredients. So um, my next one is performing extractions to remove blackheads or clogged pores. That is my favorite part of the facial. Um, I absolutely love extractions. I feel like it's definitely not for everyone. People do tend to get kind of grossed out at squeezing all the crap out of your skin. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> No, it's, it's definitely very necessary um, because I feel 
you have ever heard of Dr. Pimple Popper and watch some of the things that the dermatologists deal with, you know, I feel like a lot of it could have been prevented if these people went to an esthetician and were able to get it removed whenever it was a lot more manageable, a lot smaller. Um, but it's um, not necessarily my client's favorite part of the skincare service because it's not always painless. I mean, whenever I'm squeezing at your face with uh, my hands or if I have um, an extractor tool of some sort, like you have to really watch the pressure and uh, make sure that you're mindful of your client's comfort level with the extractions because everyone does have a different pain tolerance. I feel like I go to town on my skin pretty often during the week and it doesn't really bother me, but other people might be a little um, intimidated whenever I come at them and I'm just like squeezing at their nose. <laughs> That's kind of funny that uh, you say it's your favorite part. I, I, uh, I think you have to be, uh, you have to be somewhat tolerant to squeamish things to enjoy that. But that's that's <laughs> you know that's good that you find that um, even one of the more difficult parts uh, enjoyable. Um, okay, so I've got some other information here about um, basically using. Um, using wax, so using wax to remove body hair or facial hair, like, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, so my particular license as an esthetician not only covers skincare and advanced skincare services, but it also covers um, waxing, both facial and body waxing, um, lashes, like lash lifting, lash extensions, and makeup application. Um, so I don't really focus on doing makeup or doing lashes. I'm definitely very skincare oriented and um, I do waxing as well. It's, it's a very different service from, the, from doing facials. Um, I really, really enjoy facials because it's very nice and relaxing and I get to just kind of, you know, zone out, do my thing. It's really quiet, but with waxing, it's very different because your clients are signing themselves up for a completely different service. Um, they're getting their hair ripped directly from the follicle. It's going to hurt no, no matter what, oh. like it's never going to be painless. Um, so I feel like for me personally, I know that my, like what I'm doing is it, it's necessary. We want to remove the hair properly, um, but it is painful. So I feel like for me, whenever I do that kind of service, I'm kind of rushing myself just to make sure that I'm, I, I want to remove the body hair, but I want to do it as fast as possible because I know that it's just not an enjoyable service, whereas for the facials, most people want to sit for an hour to an hour and a half. Um, but great way to make money. So time is money with waxing. Um, if anyone wants to become an esthetician and has that knack for waxing, that's a really, really great way to start off and really profit from it immediately. Yeah, so while we're on the subject of waxing and uh, different kinds of services that can be offered, could you maybe speak a little bit to the difference between a um, similar occupation, so maybe a massage therapist and a esthetician and a cosmetologist? Yeah, so our licenses are all very different. Um, I do massage in my treatments most of the time, but it's definitely not, not body work the same way that a massage therapist would do it. Um, I feel like most of our focus is on upper body. It's really just hand, arm, neck, shoulder, scalp, stuff like that. that. And we're not doing any kind of deeper pressure. Everything's very light. Um, to, whereas a massage therapist is able to really work on all areas of, their, of your body and they have a lot, much more extensive knowledge. Um, I was really only taught how each muscle in the face, whereas they're going to know every part of your body and they're going to be able to relieve any type of chronic pain that you might be experiencing. I'm probably not who you want to go to to get that kink out of your neck. Um, and with a cosmetologist, I feel like a lot of people don't know the difference. Um, so my schooling was about 600 hours and a cosmetologist has to go to school for 1800. So their license covers a lot more than mine does. They're able to do everything that I do and more. Um, so they're able to do everything an esthetician does along with 
doing all types of hair and doing nails as well. Um, but the only thing that I noticed when I was out of Veda, and especially from making friends in the cosmetology program, they did not have an extensive skincare training the way that we did. It was strictly skincare. It was 600 hours, nothing but skincare. And um, their time in school probably had less than 100 hours, I, probably less than 50, to be honest. Um, so I, I would definitely recommend for any cosmetologists who are trying to get into more of the aesthetics realm to do some continuing education because there is a lot to know with skin. You have to know every layer of the skin and know which um, which enzymes are going to do like different things for your skin, which products and which ingredients are going to match up. And it does does take a lot of time so I would recommend for them to do much more extensive research before just buying stuff from the beauty supply shop and trying to use that for their facials but cosmetologists are great great they they know definitely a lot more than me um and I knew that I never wanted to do hair I just I never had an interest I didn't like the thought of having to cut people's hair all day because god forbid I've messed it up I just wouldn't know what to do with myself um but yeah, cosmetologists are great. I love them. I have uh, many cosmetology friends. That's great. So um, it sounds like, you know, th there's definitely differences in the type of information and the type of skills that you learn as a cosmetologist, a massage therapist, and an esthetician. And you had specifically seeked out uh, this sort of skincare focus in being an esthetician so that you could improve people's um, conditions. And do you just do facial skincare or do you do also like skin, like, anywhere on your body um and what about oh, what about men yeah uh, no facials are not facials are not just for your face um we can do a facial on pretty much any part of your body um my most popular body treatments are typically back facials or um i do get a lot of girls that want to do like a full backside treatment where i'll do like their their back all the way down to the back of their thighs um just to really deeply exfoliate those hard to reach areas and help get any kind of ingrowns removed or remove any kind of blemishes. That's great. So yeah, I think that um, that kind of covers the task oriented portion, Taylor. Um, I, I have just a few more points here. Uh, so do you use like, let's talk a little bit about tools and technology. So we'll start with technology. Uh, what's uh, do you use uh, computer systems or anything like that in your job? Yes. Um, aside from marketing on social media, media constantly. I do have a booking system that I utilize just to schedule my appointments and do my clients intake forms and make sure that they provide all the information that I need in order to better, you know, provide the best results for their skin. That's awesome. And then, so in terms of in terms of tools, uh, you've mentioned, you know, extraction. So, like, uh, maybe you use some sorts of tools to remove uh, blackheads. Um. Yeah, definitely. Um, I use a variety of different kind of metal loop tools to extract blackheads. I have um, an ultrasonic skin scrubber that I like to do extractions and also just to do all over the face for a nice, like, gentle exfoliation. Um, I have a lot of different high-tech kind of devices, like I use d machines that deliver microcurrents into the skin, that's the high-frequency device. Um, I have massage in me, I use a microdermabrasion machine really often, which that basically vacuums out your pores, like it sucks everything out, while at the same time it has a manual exfoliant. Um, but there's a lot to it, I mean a lot more than people would think. Um, I use a facial steamer in pretty much every facial just to open up the pores and of course I have a ring light just to record my uh, my services um, yeah even even the wax pot is uh, something that people don't always think that you know it is electric and you have to be careful when you're handling it because it does get really very hot so these tools I mean as some of them seem like they might be quite expensive right isn't that the case I mean 
like this, they, for example. They can this, be. Yeah. They can be. Okay, so we talked about tools. So I'm just going to kind of loop back around here, and I want to just quickly talk about, um, I guess, in relation to uh, your your sort of um, your entrepreneurship, you know, having your own business. So can you talk a little bit about like customer service and sales and marketing and kind of how that works for your new business? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I do a lot of my marketing solely through social media. Um, I feel like Instagram is a great way to showcase your work. It's really just like a portfolio portfolio for everyone to look at. Um, so I do spend a lot of time on social media and I feel like I spend most of my marketing budget on ads for social media um, to where that is um, a big part of it. And then retailing is huge. Um, retail commission is how I make a lot of my money. It's definitely not just, um, not just tips. Um, the retail is very important because it's almost like the same thing as going to the dentist. Um, you're not going to not brush your teeth every day whenever you're waiting in between your appointments for cleaning. Um, so it's very similar to skincare. You want to make sure that your clients are set up to reach their skin's goals. Because um, even though I'm wonderful at what I do, I'm not a magician and I cannot always clear it up on my own just from coming in for monthly treatments. They're going to need that more aggressive home care sometimes. So it's really really good to have those options and utilize those options for my clients because um, I feel like I really like to make people happy and that was something that I noticed in my old job that I would feel very um, very offended whenever I couldn't make someone happy like if the deal fell through and we just couldn't find something that they wanted um, I just I don't know I I took it to heart to where it's a lot easier to make people happy in this realm because um, I do see the change in people's mentality and like their change in energy whenever they've come in for the first time they, they address you know these are the problems that I have with my skin and what I want to improve and after coming for eight weeks seeing just the physical like confidence that they have from doing that that's very very fulfilling and um, that's really why I try so hard to educate myself on, on you know all different kinds of products and what new treatments are coming out that could help with different kinds of skin conditions because um, that's really the important thing for me I feel like the money comes whenever you provide good customer service and you are who people want to go to because in this business I feel like I myself am the business um, there, it, it's very easy for anyone to read through a list of you know these are the steps in, in the skincare routine but everyone has a different touch everyone has a different technique different personality um, different way to connect with their clients. So I find that to be really, um, really a, a big part of what I do is just providing people with one of the best experiences that they can have. Yeah, and I heard that somebody had got the best facial award at Aveda, maybe. <laughs> I did. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I was the valedictorian of my class. I, I graduated at the top and I, I did get the best facial award. And I was surprised that day, honestly. I was like, what the hell? Are you serious? I did it. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, just a couple more things. So something we don't usually talk about is um, things like, I guess, being uh, dexterous with your fingers. So things like moving around your arm in a steady pattern and um, mm -hmm. making very coordinated movements with your fingers. Can you talk a little bit about that? It's kind of a unique thing to your industry. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it's something that people don't think about at all because um, there really is a lot that goes into it. Um, I feel like particularly whenever I'm doing the massage portions of the facial you don't want to just be like rubbing and random rhythms and you, you want it to be nice and slow so it has more relaxing um, technique to it. And I feel like it is very important overall for estheticians, even when they're not doing skincare. I mean, just thinking about the lash techs that are out here. I mean, 
the level of precision that they're having to utilize is on the same level as a surgeon, honestly. I mean, it is so tedious. And to, yep. to be working on an area of the body that's so sensitive, um, it's really incredible. Plus, um, I feel like be, being ambidextrous is really an important thing in this industry, too, because um, even whenever it's just something simple like taking two brushes to brush the mask on their face, one on each side versus just using one it creates a very different experience for the guest and it feels very weird at first like when you're not used to using your non-dominant hand um so yeah there's definitely a lot of things when it comes to dexterity that you'll find it challenging at first but it's definitely not impossible to improve um but yeah that it is a very big part of what what we do, like our the sense of touch during the facial is very important. You want to make sure that you're going in nice and easy and you don't want to scare your client because most of the time they're going to be falling asleep on your table. Yeah. And I mean, that's, uh, that, I mean, that was one thing that struck me, just some of the uh, detail orientation, you know, necessary to perform these services has to be uh difficult for some people. I know I'm not particularly uh, good with <laughs> doing very detailed things so uh, with my hands. So um, I think that's, uh, that's an interesting component of it. So Taylor, that concludes the, um, the job part of it, uh, where we basically just talk about the job and, you know, the responsibilities of the job. I'm, I'm just going to ask you a couple more questions about, um, your personality. So just so everyone knows, this is sort of one of the things that I as psychologists look at is someone's personality and that, how that sort of connects with their job. And so Taylor, you know, took a test for me. So I'm going to talk about some of these things that I noticed. Um, one thing, Taylor, is that uh, you, based on your test, do you seem like a pretty introverted person? Uh, so you, you're you more, a little bit more reserved and, um, you, you know, you get your energy from being alone and maybe being more reflective and doing things independently. So that seems to contrast a little bit with your job, right? Because you're, you're working in customer service, you're dealing with people all day. Uh, so, so how does that sit with you? Um, it's interesting because what immediately came to mind is I think that it's perfect for doing facials um, because I really am just one-on-one -on -one with my client and I feel like it's very different from when someone goes and gets their hair done. I feel like a lot of times they come in kind of telling their hairstylist what they want and what to expect, um, whereas it's very different with my clients. They're coming to me and, you know, they're not tell telling me what I should be putting on their face and how I should be doing it. They kind of leave everything to where I'm very in control of the situation. Um, so I really like that part of it. And especially whenever I'm working as my own boss, I really don't have a whole lot of other people around me other than my clients. And I just do everything one-on-one -on -one appointment only. Um, so I feel like it does have a pretty good reflection of it's good for someone that's introverted, but I feel feel like for people who are a little bit more extroverted and they really do get a lot of their energy from being around other people, that a job being a waxer would probably be wonderful for them because they don't have to be quiet and listen to little spa music. Um, you know, it's one of those services where you really want, want to spark a conversation with your guest and make sure that they're feeling comfortable because um, how awkward would that be if you were just laying there on the table getting waxed and your esthetician isn't saying a word to you? <laughs> And, 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 you know, speaking of waxing, you know, that's a very personal service, obviously. So I, I feel like that's one of those things where people would go back to the same person, right? Yeah, a lot of times, especially when it comes to women's like Brazilian waxing. I mean, not everyone is comfortable to, I mean, even take their pants off the first time. Um, to where it, it definitely is something that a lot of people I noticed don't really like to hop around. Um, and wax it's very similar with facials too. I mean, everyone does it differently, even though they're still doing the same thing. Um, some people can be faster than others. Some people might use different types of wax or just apply pressure differently than other waxers to where I think, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's I lost that's my train of thought. That's okay. No, I think you were perfectly on. Uh, so another thing I just wanted to ask about quickly is um, conscientiousness. So you scored really pretty high on conscientiousness. So that basically means you're very organized and disciplined and you like schedules and routine. Um, d does that uh, feel accurate to you? And, and how does that sort of play into things? Yes, um, that sounds like me to a T. Um, I, maybe it's just because I'm a Virgo and we kind of love routines. Um, but yeah, I feel like a lot of my, it's very easy for me with my work now because it's very, very easy to kind of gauge like how much time I'm going to spend with each client. And th there's a reason why it's called a skincare routine. Um, it's to, it's very repetitive to some extent, but because everyone's skin is so different and there's so many different conditions that need to be treated, I do still get that variety in my work to where it's fulfilling, to where it's not boring. But yeah, it definitely is something that can be a little bit repetitive and you definitely have to be organized in order to do a job like this in general, because um, it's it's not going to look good whenever you're scrambling around the room, like looking for things in drawers, like it's it's better to, you know, take a couple minutes to get your room ready for your client. Yeah, so it seems like you actually found a career path that fits you really well. Um, it seems to blend together with like your strengths and your interests. So um, I guess just to sum up here, Taylor, uh, could you maybe just give like a maybe just a one minute summary of, you know, what being an esthetician means to you and how does it uh, how does it make you feel about your life and, and your place in your life? Yeah, um, I feel like, honestly, I was very lost before I got into the skincare realm. Um, I feel like it's very important to have your purpose in life line up with what you're doing for a living. Because it's very satisfying for me because I know that I'm helping people on a much more personal level than I was before and that I'm able to help a lot more people because let's be honest it's a lot easier for me to find people that want to buy products for their face versus people that want to sell their house I only sell a house for someone maybe once every 10 years where I do treatments for my clients now every month so it's been a lot easier to build those more genuine lasting more long-term kind of connections um, to where I feel like that's really what it is for me that I'm able to really connect with these people and uh, um, they really share a lot with me about their life and their families and it's nice to um, to have that human connection. I feel like skin care really isn't just about how your skin looks. Um, it's not as superficial as people might think that it is. Um, because I feel like whenever I was a teenager, I didn't have the best skin and I, I get what it's like to be not very confident in yourself. So to help people get to, to a better place to where it still shows physically too, um, but to help them make that kind of shift in their mindset is really important for what I do. That's awesome. Well, that was a great, uh, a great conclusion there. So Again, uh, thank you so much, Taylor, the esthetician, for this interview. And I, I want people to know how to get in touch with you. So if, you, uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with Taylor, how can they do that? Yeah, if anyone wants to get in touch with me, I, um, I have an Instagram, which is just at Taylor the Esthetician. Um, it's Taylor the Esthetician across the board. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok now. So definitely... Um, send me a message if you are looking for a new esthetician to do your skincare treatments or if you simply just want to chat about skin.